So today we're going to be doing um, some previews of lessons that I designed with um, Welcoming Refugees. Um, it's a part of Welcoming America. I'm not sure if um, many of you have heard of them, but they were launched in 2009. They're a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization. Um, they work with many different um, agencies within communities across the nation and actually globally now. Um, what their um, thought is is that welcoming creates prosperity in communities and this includes in classrooms so when you welcome all students all parents all of your colleagues you're going to get the best of um, the talent out of your learners and your community so um, welcoming america put together um, this resource um, and i'm going to just talk about the agenda you can forward so quickly, I'm gonna just um, review a little bit more about trauma-informed schools and how to get started before doing these lessons. Um, some keys on building empathy and understanding in the classroom. And I know we're gonna have some more of that this um, afternoon with Dawn. And then I'm gonna go over two lessons. One is called a welcoming book. The other is where does your name come from? And then I'm gonna um, have you do some reflection and brainstorming. I love um, hearing from educators and community leaders on how they would use these resources in their community. So before I kind of jump into these trauma-informed concepts, um, some of the thoughts that I got from the previous speakers today and yesterday, um, you are um, part of what builds these students lifelong. So creating that safe space in your classroom, um, it starts with just knowing um, what your students want to be called, knowing what their gender identity is, knowing the histories of their cultures, um, having resources in your classroom that reflect and that engage the students. Um, making sure that you're scaffolding your assignments for all levels of learners, that you're modeling, um, that you are providing content, um, and making sure that your students um, are doing that listening and, and trust. Um, you want to be transparent and trustworthy, so have clear policies and rules. Um, you want those routines and rituals in your classroom. Um, every student has a different history. Um, and when we're talking about newcomers, it's not just about the immigrant students. It could be a student who maybe has gone through a profound loss, whether it's divorce or death, and then they're in your classroom all of a sudden or in your school and new to the community and the parents or the guardians are new to the community. So you wanna create that welcoming atmosphere in everything that you do. Um, so build those support systems and connections, um, be that constellation maker, um, using the community resources. I know yesterday there were questions about how do we do this in rural communities versus cities? And there's definitely ways, um, you know, there's business owners, immigrant business owners possibly, or migrant workers that you can bring in to, um, you know, talk to the students or to the parents. Um, make sure that you know who your counseling and health service providers are. Um, and also students want to have a shared purpose in learning. So give them choices. Um, when you're creating those routines in your classroom, make sure that the students have a say in how they want to learn that year, what their goals are, what their strengths are. Um, be a collaborator, you know, provide lessons that include um, group learning and guided learning, um, you know, give your students kind of that empowerment and voice. I think David gave really good examples of how important it was to kind of have that one-on-one. -on -one. And you want to build your students with um, uh, tools that they'll be able to grow and be resilient and make changes. And it's okay. Um, I think... Um, when Alisa and I worked in Long Island together, um, it was okay if P, um, students who came to our trainings um, came in with different ideologies. They maybe heard something at the dinner table that you know wasn't what we wanted to hear, but it was important that they said it at these meetings. And if they walked out of our trainings, um, with a different attitude, that was great. But if they still 
um, said, you know, I don't like this or I don't like that, that was also okay because it takes time and you want to make sure that as an educator, you're being flexible. So in terms of the trauma-informed concepts, the lessons that I'm going to walk through with you, it's important to kind of understand where your students are coming from. So going through, um, you know, the differences um, uh, between immigration, maybe you have a a uh, student who's there just temporarily, you can stay on that slide, um, or who's an asylum, um, asylee or refugee. Um, you don't have to single them out, but having literature or showing films or having speakers talk about different types of immigration can be um, very important, especially for the, I guess, middle and high school students. And then also, when a um, student from another culture talks about their family, um, they may be saying sister or auntie, but it may just be a family friend and you wanna be aware, um, you know, these relationships can be really close and they are a really important um, part of the student's um, story. Also, stories of resiliency. Um, I think David's story was really important. There is, um, there is a lot of um, TED Talks that I think some of you brought up, and then also using stories like Esther Krinitz and the um, you know, primary sources and first person um, testimonies are very important. Um, like I said before, be flexible, be neutral, make modifications as you move along. Um, make sure you're checking in with your students to see um, if they are understanding what the goals of these lessons are. And then again, no one should ever feel singled out. Um, a newcomer can be very vulnerable. They're going through big traumas or micro traumas, and you want to make sure that they're comfortable. So it may mean that you need to um, have a pre-conversation with them um, before starting on these activities. And you can forward. So the first lesson I'm gonna walk you through is called the welcoming book. Um, so it's really how you can welcome newcomers to your school and community. Um, you can do this with staff um, at the beginning of the year. You can do it with parent associations. Um, it's a fun kind of creative collaborative way to get people to think about what it means to feel welcome um, and how you can welcome um, newcomers. So in this um, activity, students are going to be creating a classroom and community welcoming project. You can forward. So what you want to do is kind of use that emotional connection. Um, you're going to have students, you know, either close their eyes or think about what was a time where you were new to a place and really kind of guide them through this, um, this experience. You know, what did the place sound like? What did it smell like? Um, who was there? Did you meet new people? Did you even want to go to that new place? And make them um, share, you know, in small groups or back to the class, depending on how big your group is. And get them to think about, you know, what they didn't like, what they did like, and then have them really imagine what was it, what happened that made them feel welcomed. Okay, so pulling out these emotions and kind of that, um, you know, just making everyone connected in, in that same space, whether they're a newcomer, an immigrant, um, everyone has had this experience of feeling uncertain, um, excited, fearful, um, and so they start to empathize with what it might be. Um, and this is a really good time also to make sure that you have connected literature in your classroom and that you have um, also informed um, other support staff. Um, you know, they may also be part of this um, activity. So one thing I think is a great starter for this activity after you kind of evoke those emotions is to read the book Arrival Together. Um, this book does, has very few words and the words that are in it is actually a made up language and symbols, you can forward. And so it's, um, the images do evoke a lot of emotions and fear and you can just kind of do a picture walk with the students. Um, and to start thinking about what would it be if all of a sudden you ended up in a world where you 
didn't know anything. You didn't know the language. You didn't know the, the um, alphabet. Um, no faces look familiar, no sounds, no foods. And this book does a really great job. It's actually been in my toolkit for quite a while. Um, you can put in the panels there if you've um, ever used this book too. So I can measure. So, um, and then basically just bringing back the point that we've all been newscomers at some point and then get your class to start thinking about what was it that they um, felt that welcome, welcoming, you know, um, what point, what was it that someone did? I mean, it could be as simple as a smile or someone inviting them somewhere. Um, and you can forward. And here's some examples of what you can do. It doesn't necessarily have to be a book or you can put these pages into a book. You can also um, in, do an activity with video um, and you can make these available to all newcomers, not just your um, immigrant students, but to new staff members, new parents, new students. You can be drawing, um, students can draw a map of the school. Um, maybe just a map of the playground and um, have examples of how to use the equipment, um, a crossword of key, um, key words that are important to that school, um, maybe have pictures of the staff members and then explain, you know, this is who you go to for, you know, if you have a picture of the school nurse and have a picture of a band-aid or something. Um, make sure that students know how they can be engaged and involved. So have um, pictures of the clubs and activities um, in school, out of school, um, and also a calendar using symbols and dates. Um, I actually had a kindergarten, that's fine, a kindergarten class who um, made an alphabet book just using um, their bodies. And um, it was a really fun way for them to introduce themselves um, to one another. And um, at the end of your books or presentations, you can have students write a short bio, include a photo or a self-portrait, and then make a statement about how they welcome newcomers. And um, any of these activities too, in September, um, Welcoming America actually has a welcoming week, and it's a great way to maybe start these at the beginning of the year and share them during September 17th to 21st this year, and you can go to their website to learn more about that. Um, so I gave you some elementary um, examples you can forward. You can go to the next slide. Um, so elementary modifications, um, using those picture books. And, and then here we have our upper school adult modifications. So use the welcoming stories. Actually, they're on the Immigrant Learning Center. Um, in our lesson plan, we have um, links to three or four stories. Um, listen to testimonials. Um, what was it like for students to um, be a newcomer and what was it that made them feel welcome? So listening to others' stories can help them create their own story. Um, and then also, once again, kind of brainstorming the ideas that made them feel welcome and feel free to use um, video, other multimedia to make these available. You can forward. Um, and so when you're using these selected testimonials, um, you want to look at the, um, the writer's journey and think about one um, example that shows you know, that they were a newcomer and what was it that made them feel that ease and transition to the United States. And then what was that welcoming action um, that made them feel welcome and what would they do to make someone else feel welcome. And all of these are in those um, testimonials that are in the lesson plan. And we'll send the links for that lesson plan. Um, so again, you can use this activity as a staff development. It's a great way to kind of kick off the school year so that everyone in your school and support system understands um, that you know, everyone is a newcomer at some point. 
Um, make sure that your parent association may be familiar if you create a welcoming book that they know that that is available for all families. Um, you can create speaker panels for the students or have students who feel comfortable sharing their welcoming stories. Um, I think that helps to evoke not just the empathy for a newcomer, but also get students um, feeling like they want to be part of something bigger. Um, participate in that welcoming um, week. Um, and, you know, that's again, that's, let's see, September 17th to 21st. So you have a couple weeks at the kickoff of the school year, but, you know, make every week a welcoming week. It doesn't just have to be for that. Um, time period. And so the next lesson is where does your name come from? And your name is often the first thing that anyone knows about you and it carries a lot of weight. So um, again, in creating those safe spaces, you know, you as an educator receive a roster and that name on the roster may not be what the student wants to be called. So you need to spend a little bit of time at the beginning of the school year, not only learning what your students want to be called, but how to pronounce that. Um, so the lesson is um, many people's names have interesting origins. And so we're gonna get the participants to share the stories of where their name comes from and the meaning behind their names. And this can be used as an icebreaker. It can be used within different groups that already know one, each other, one another. And what you wanna do is create um, kind of respect and, and understanding. And everyone's been in that same boat, you know, where, um, they've either pronounced someone's name wrong or had their name pronounced wrong. Um, I know that my mom, I'm not going to tell you her name, but for a long time she was referred to as the kid with the really long name. And she went through school as the kid with a really long name. Um, and then she married someone with a really long name, although we shortened our name from Teshkovitz to Tesh, and that's a whole different story. But um, so your students are going to discover something important about their classmates. I mean, nothing is more important than your name. I mean, we carry that along with our lives uh, for our whole lives. And also, um, when you kind of bring this to the high school and adult le level, you have that opportunity to share. I thought it was a great podcast and um, blog um, that I assigned for the homework, and we'll go through that so you can forward. Um, there's a lot of great literature. Um, these are just a couple examples. Um, this is really helps students to honor the differences. Um, I know a lot of times students will um, not like their names or want to change their names. At a young age, sometimes they think someone else has a better name. And these books are just um, a sweet way to kind of um, talk about you know the importance of a name and how everyone's um, name has a meaning. There's also a couple of books. I think someone just put one in here. Um, I also liked the Change Your Name Store. My actually my daughter actually reminded me about that one. Um, and there's a lot of fun books out there. Um, you can forward. So for the elementary. Um, level, you can, you know, have the students go home and ask their family members um, if they were named after a person, like what the origin of their name was, um, what other names were you thinking about naming me before I was born, um, and then have the students um, kind of reflect. Um, you can do this with art integration or storytelling or just talk back. Um, you know, do you like your name? You know, why do you like it? if you could change your name and with elementary you get some really fun um, new names you know why they would change their name um, in fact when my second daughter was born i let my first daughter name her and she wanted to name her rainbow and i actually gave her the um, middle name keshet which means rainbow in hebrew so it's a fun way to ask those questions about you know what name would you you give if you could choose your own um, and then also nicknames. These can be really important because a student who feels comfortable with you may, that might be the only class where they're able to go by a nickname. So make sure that you get to know your students and then ask them where, you know, the origin of that name came from. Again, don't 
go off of that roster. Um, it would be really horrible if you graduated from high school, you put all those years in, and then when you get up on that stage, someone calls you by the wrong name. So um, you can forward. Here's some activities, art integration. Here's another book I think is really great called The Name Quilt um, for elementary and also for English language learners that talks about a quilt that has um, ancestors' names and I think also learning about the origin of your last name at this point can also be a really great um, gift to give a student. Um, using acrostic poetry, artwork using their names, um, quilt making that shows names and you know things that they like. Um, and then you can forward. And someone also brought this up on the sidebar, the house on Mango Street in chapter four. There's a really great um, presentation of Esperanza's name. Um, and I think it's a great way to do a read aloud or have students do this for homework. But what it really, really does is um, kind of drives home how at some point, you know, everyone kind of is wondering about their name or wants to change that name or, you know, how can my parents give me this name? It carries so much. Um, so it's a fun way for students to kind of learn about themselves. Um, and then for the homework, let's jump to the next slide. Um, how many of you um, were able to listen to that podcast? You can just let me know in the sidebar here. Um, it's really, really, um, I think a great thing for, I'd say, you know, seventh grade and beyond to listen to because this also carries that implicit bias. Um, you know, you all of us have seen a name and you're looking at it and you're panicking, like, how am I gonna pronounce this? Well, ask the student, you know, the student wants to be asked. Um, I think it's better than, um, you know, being a fumble bumbler um, or being that arrogant mangler, um, or in other words, the asshole who, you know, didn't even give a hoot about how to pronounce it. Um, probably that same person who just called my mom, you know, the kid with the long name. Um, but what you may not know is, in the classroom, you know, we have those microaggressions, um, those implicit biases, and just by mispronouncing or not using the correct name, um, it is a microaggression. This is something, you know, that we hope that we're not doing. We are human, we're gonna make mistakes, but just be aware and also let your students, I think this is a great way to introduce the microaggression in the classroom by doing this name activity and by having the students either listen to the blog or, um, uh, I'm sorry, listen to the podcast or read that blog. Um, you can forward. Um, be that calibrator. Um, make sure that you're always, um, you know, trying a little bit harder and have your students also put that into their toolbox. Um, you know, like I said, you want to be that agent for change and um, you want to be able to give the students the tools and that safe space where they're able to grow and be resilient and um, make mistakes. It's okay. So you can forward. Thanks. I'm going to I want to get some feedback here too. So um, in that upper school modification, again, there's not too much different, but you know, again, have the, the students really kind of drive home why names are important to identity. Have them listen to that podcast, um, you can forward. And so on the Padlets, um, I want you to either um, share away a page that you might put into a creating a welcoming book and places you would share it, or um, you can also um, think about you know, where your name comes or strategies that you're engaging in to pronounce a new student's names. These are all um, really great. And I just saw someone um, talk about don't ask someone if they have a nickname right out of the gate. I think that's absolutely right. But as an educator in the classroom, you may hear the friends calling them something. And so you can have kind of a sidebar conversation about, hey, you know, I heard um, that's interesting. And then maybe, like I said, that might be the one place, um, one classroom where they feel comfortable enough to use um, that nickname. And that can also, um, you know, make them feel welcome. 
Um, I love that pronouncing the names, um, using the video and the Flipgrid. Um, there's on the sidebar here, creating student commercials and rhyming games, um, wonderful. Um, using the um, word welcome in many different languages as part of your welcoming book. And then not just using this with um, the students and staff and parents, but also with other organizations um, or um, volunteers that are coming into your school. Do I think this really helps to um, kind of build that learning community. Um, and once again, as you're pulling in other supports and um, making your constellation, um, you can use these activities to kind of enhance um, that culture. Um, so during family events, using the activity with um, you know, families, um, the more that you engage the students in activities, you're going to get um, beautiful results and outcomes. And um, let's go to the next slide, I'll wrap up. And you can always email me too. Here's some other resources, um, Teaching Books Net has a page where authors, so if you're doing um, a book, you know, whether it has to do anything with immigration or welcoming or whatever, you have a lot of authors out there that you might not know how to pronounce their names, and it's the author actually in a video or audio um, link pronouncing their name, and it's a lot of fun to kind of walk through that and see. Um, and then also, you can do a pledge with your staff or with your class called My Name Identity, and it's basically just kind of um, talking about letting go of those kind of um, implicit biases and making sure that you are calling people by um, their names and understanding their cultures and backgrounds um, through that beautiful gift that we all have, which is our names forward the slide. Um, I want to stay in touch with all of you. So um, my website's actually being built. I thought it would be ready by today, but um, Claire at elementoeducation.com. Um, like the Art and Remembrance to stay tuned about uh, the new lesson plans. And to learn more about the Welcoming Week, you can look at welcomingamerica.org. Um, and again, stay in touch and thank you so much for this feedback and for your wonderful questions. I've really appreciated these past two days. Thank you so much.